Yeah, it was funny. So when we first got this sim um, at the beginning of lockdown in, in 2020, we, uh, great people at SimCraft, they gave me this lovely piece of machinery. And actually, I never thought it would happen, but the interaction within the dis disability community was, was huge. Everyone was wondering how they can do it too. And there's no textbook on how to do it. Anyone can do it. Um, and in their own ways. Like I found out a lot of people are actually just using buttons for throttle and brake. Um, but then using this handbrake here was, was great for me. Um, and that actually, I know SimCraft sold a lot of these after, after, uh, after we helped develop it and, and get it up and running. Yes, yeah, so right now I'm using the Cube Controls uh, CSX2. Um, primarily because I think it looks really cool. Um, but then also it has a dual ac dual access clutch. Um, so you can see here there's clutch paddles on the left and the right side. Um, but it has, with the dual access technology, this rotary here is primarily used for your bite points for launch controls. So you can tune one clutch paddle to find the bite point and you can get better starts. But in my case, I turn that off by just rotating it to the off position and I can apply the throttle on the left or the right side. So that was big for me um, because on certain tracks, when you're turning, you know, you might want to actually apply the throttle on a different hand than what you would normally use. So I default myself with my left hand for throttle just because with braking on my right, I feel like there's less delay if I use throttle on the on the left. Um, but yeah, there, there's definitely some corners, mainly left-hand corners that are tight. When I'm turning this much, I can't physically reach that paddle anymore. So then I actually will start applying throttle on the other side until I'm straight, and then I will switch back to the left hand. Um, a little complicated. It took some practice. It's still... Uh, work in progress but we're, we're slowly getting there yeah so phase two I mean I, I'm a believer that the ultimate steering wheel for me is going to get the brake on the steering wheel as well um, just so that way I'll have better control of either the virtual vehicle or long-term real-life vehicle um, on the racetrack because right now having one hand off the wheel while braking into almost every corner you don't have perfect control um, where I feel like if I can keep both my hands on the wheel at all times that would be huge um, and then the next thing would probably be if the throttle were connected on both sides so if I moved the left paddle say 50% the right one would go with it so if I'm using one hand or the other it's easy to basically just continue where the other one started, if that makes sense. Um, because right now, let's say if I'm 50% throttle on the right, I kind of have to guess at where 50 is on the left to switch hands. Um, it's easy when you're full throttle, obviously, but in that kind of modulation phase, if I need to change hands for some reason, it would be great if both could move together. Um, but uh, that's... I'd say that's probably the, the next phase that I'd want to do. Well, yeah, it's so far this wheel is for me an upgrade from the wheel I started with. So the first steering wheel I had, um, I only had um, throttle could only be calibrated on one clutch paddle. There was just like the clutch. So I picked the left clutch for that. And when I was shopping online and when I came across the cube controls wheel, um, they were actually super, super helpful online They answered all the questions I had, but the big thing for me is I wanted to be able to use clutch or throttle on both sides. Um, and they assured me that their wheel could do that. And sure enough, you know, they weren't wrong. So that was already a big upgrade for me. And I noticed a big improvement in lap time, um, primarily on the road courses, was I was able to just have a lot more control on throttle because I could use both hands um, and that, that was a big big step up for me yeah you know I think every car until I really know exactly what I want 
it's going to be a constant trial and error. But you know, right now I'm I'm so used to me applying the throttle down at the bottom of the steering wheel. I think it would be very weird if I put the throttle, let's say, up here where I'm using my index fingers. So for me, I think moving forward because of the simulator and because of everything I've done over the last little while, once I get into real life scenarios, I will definitely try to get the throttle down on the bottom of the steering wheel. Because one thing I've learned when it's down there, when I'm full throttle, I actually have very good grip on the steering wheel where I feel like possibly if it was up higher, I would never have as good of a grip. Um, because one thing I've learned from my um, accident is I've learned a lot about the human anatomy and, and obviously how the body works, not by choice, but primarily your, your main grip comes from your middle finger and your ring finger. So you kind of want to keep those on the wheel as much as possible. Um, which is why I think kind of having that down there would, uh, would be pretty beneficial once we get into real life scenarios where there maybe isn't power steering or the best thing about a virtual simulator is with this direct drive motor here I can make the steering wheel as heavy or as light as I want so I try to make it heavy enough to simulate what a real world would be but it's never exact um, especially you're not feeling the bumps or maybe the vibrations as much as you would in reality. And then yeah, right now the most important thing uh, going on is my, my handbrake here. So this is regularly used as, um, I guess almost like a off-road or rally cross, or I mean even if, um, yeah, it's just a, a handbrake, but normally you pull it towards you. Um, to engage the handbrake. Well, what Sim, uh, SimCraft and myself did is we actually, I wanted to push the brake as if I was pushing the brake pedal with my leg, um, which is where we came up with just spinning it around and I push it to apply it. But where, the, where things got really complicated was this lever was designed not really for that much force. It's more like a on-off button if for its normal use. Um, but what I wanted to do was have very good feeling like you would a brake pedal on your car, or race car, or whatever the case is. Um, and with the help of SimCraft, we came up with this great system and it wasn't, this isn't the first version. Um, this is probably version two or version three. Um, because the amount, I wanted the brake to actually be pretty physical to push. Um, Cause I thought that gained me more feeling and control with the braking and uh, Anyone who knows motorsports knows that braking um, is everything for, for lap time and for competition. So um, I wanted to make sure that I could get a really good feeling of the brakes because um, I knew that was going to bring me my most performance in the in the iRacing and in the virtual world. So we came up with a lot of stuff um, and it was kind of a ripple effect where everything was flexing a little too much because it wasn't designed to do that. Things were cracking, welds were breaking. So we were constantly shipping it back, shipping it over, making adjustments. And what we landed on is a load cell style um, brake system, which is actually the same system of what SimCraft uses for their normal pedals. Um, and then we changed the whole geometry of the whole system. So that way, like a normal brake pedal, you're not going over center when you're applying the brake. So you remain with good consistent brake feel. Um, and then they gave me a lot of different bump rubbers and different things that I could try and tune to uh, really customize it to how I want. And luckily I found something that, that works for me and we've just, I've just kept kind of fine tuning that and finessing that, but it, uh, it's not easy on my right arm, but you know, I think it's uh, definitely the best thing that we've done so far. You know, it's actually kind of funny. There's one thing, um, I think everyone takes for granted with an able body is how much you actually maneuver your weight around without knowing it. Um, but with myself as a paraplegic, weight transfers are such a common thing that you constantly have to be aware of. If not, you can get pressure sores, you can get a lot of different medical complications. And um, once I got on this sim, I realized I was spending so many hours on this thing trying to get competitive and you know it was so much fun competing again that um, I needed to figure out a way to get, be more comfortable. And I uh, 
I found this cushion online from Purple. Um, most of you guys know them for their mattresses, but they also do a portable cushion. And that's been a game changer for me, not only on this simulator, but I use it a lot in um, my travel life. I take it with me on long road trips. I take it with me on airplanes to, to make the airplane seat a little more comfortable for me. And I actually have one. I have two on this sim right now. I have one down here by my feet. So move over here. So this is basically what it is, just a little cushion with purples technology. Um, and I just set it down here because there's a lot of pressure on your heels while you're driving. And a lot of people will do little maneuvers with their feet to change the pressure points on their heels or on their foot or whatever they're doing. Or maybe they'll take their foot off the ground completely to let blood circulate again. But uh, paraplegics don't have that luxury. Um, so trying to make everything as comfortable as possible um, really goes a long way. And this purple cushion has been um, a big improvement for me on that. You know, I've done 24 hour races on the simulator where I've sat in this sim for like six hours, seven hours straight without um, any issues at all. So it's been, it's been a big improvement for me in, in terms of comfort. Um, I also have one under my butt and on their website it's great it actually have they have different thicknesses that they recommend comfort for X amount of hours so the one on my butt is one that we normally use for um, I think they call, they call it like the office chair cushion um, and they guarantee comfort for like up to eight hours and uh, it is not disappointed with um, it's kind of a ripple effect of not having the ability to, to move your legs as much is you actually don't get as much circulation to your lower extremities. And compression socks are a huge part of any paraplegic. Um, and I've actually, I experimented with a lot of different socks, buying them on different websites and more expensive ones, cheaper ones. And I've really settled on, on one brand that I, I really like and they do a great job. Um, and for me on the sim, I actually almost try to wear um, a higher compression sock because I don't know how long I'm going to be down here and uh, when you're sitting here you know you're not really focusing on even moving your legs because I'm just trying to you know do my job on eye racing the best that I can so um, Comrade makes a great sock uh, on the sim I use their knee-high socks just to help gain as much circulation as I can from uh, while I'm focusing on other things you know I think eye racing is as a had such a big part in my keeping my my hunger alive you know I mean I, I, I never lost motivation in my training and in everything else but competing again and competing against people that I raced against before my injury was actually it almost like rejuvenated me it re-sparked my my drive and my fight to to continue my progress to continue training hard to you know try to get back onto the grid in reality and in my opinion I think out of all of the simulation softwares I've used so far, I think iRacing has the best car physics. I think they, it's all around for me the best platform for me to develop my hand controls and to figure out what I need to do to take this system right here into the real world. Um, and yeah, when, when I jumped in my first uh, iRacing event um, at Barber Motorsports Park back in April, you know, I got thrown in at the deep end. I only had this simulator for a couple of days and luckily it was uh, a survival race and I ended up finishing eighth in that one. And it was crazy just to compete again and to make passes and finish into the top 10. It was, uh, it was an amazing day. And it was a day that I, I thought I was gonna have to wait a lot longer um, to get that feeling back. And I got it virtually um, through iRacing and it was, uh, it was really cool. And now I've, I've experimented, I've, tried loads of different cars, different races, I've done endurance racing and you know it's it's a lot of fun and everything that you do you know you can have some fun with your friends, you can join like the official races, work on your eye rating and it um, it really keeps me sharp and I think you know right now I don't have the ability to get seat time in anything in reality um, but I feel like I'm still pretty sharp just from driving on the simulator. Alright guys, well that basically wraps it up. This is my uh, 
sim rig. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I do plan on streaming again. Um, I just need to figure out the best way to do it. Try to give you guys the best camera angles, what the good camera to use, um, and then also uh, I might I'm gonna have to upgrade my computer a little bit to try to get a better GPU um, to, just to get better frames per second while I'm streaming. Um, which the main reason I stopped streaming in the first place was because it was actually affecting my on-track performance in the races I was doing and being a competitive guy um, I want to win so you know just thanks for tuning in and uh, hope you enjoyed it.